Welcome to this week's Blind Intelligence with me, Miss Ronnie, where I always seek to give you exquisite cranial repertoire. This week, we have a very special guest. We have Rostine Beats out of Virginia. Say hello to everybody. Hey, how you doing? Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. We're going to start out with how I met you is through Clubhouse. So we're going to start out with letting you tell everybody what it is that you do on Clubhouse, and then you move into what you do into the, in the music industry. Okay. Well, uh, again, thank you again for having me. Um, pleasure to be here. I'm Rothstein Beats. I run a room on Clubhouse called Music Networking No Egos. Uh, I'm a big believer that um, if you want to get some work done, you got to leave your ego at the door. Um, and it's been, uh, man, it's been a successful room. I have met uh, so many crazy and um, experienced people. Matter of fact, I had uh, Brandy and Ray J Mom in my room today. Uh, Sandra Norwood was in my room today. It's the Blind Intelligence 420 subscriber giveaway. I know you're supposed to stop, but you can't. This giveaway is handmade by me, Miss Ronnie, the host of the Blind Intelligence Show. All you have to do is subscribe to any Blind Intelligence platform to be entered. And yes, current subscribers are entered too. You can subscribe to the Blind Intelligence Podcast, available on your favorite podcasting platform. You can also be entered by subscribing to the Blind Intelligence YouTube channel. You get a bamboo rolling tray with embellishments and a compartment drawer, three very Blind Intelligence shot glass, one Blind Intelligence reusable shot bottle, one handmade weed leaf ashtray, one set of dice, and one set of playing cards. Drawing will be held April 15th, 2021, and posted to the Blind Intelligence blog page on Facebook. Sets can also be purchased on Blind Intelligence Etsy shop or www.blind-intelligence.com. Follow me on Instagram at miss.blind.intelligence underscore Ronnie. Okay, so um, I told her my price went up today because she came in there. So uh, yeah, come to come to my room on Clubhouse called uh, Music Network and No Egos. Okay. Now tell us about you as an artist, as what you do in the industry. Yes. Well, um, um, I'm a music producer. Um, I've been producing professionally for about 14 years. Um, um, I have a company called Casino Gang Records. Um, I started actually last year during the pandemic 2020. It was a dream of mine, so I just continued to press through no matter what was going on. Um, I have uh, worked with a couple people in the industry, uh, Grammy nominated, Trev Rich, um, Misha from 702, because I'm from Las Vegas. Um, but I'm also by coastal in Virginia, which is my second home, which I'm working with a lot of great artists out here in Virginia as well. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of great releases getting ready to drop this year. Um, thanks, thankful to Clubhouse, I was able to make a lot of great connections. So um, yeah, I, I plan on having you know hearing my name out there a lot more this year. Okay, so you said you started um, your label during COVID. Was COVID like an opportune time where you was decided to turn lemons to lemonade, or were you like in that creative state where hey, if I'm going to do it now, it's the best time. So what made you decide to do it during COVID? Um, well, it, it's it's kind of a funny story because uh, May 4th, 2019, I made a, a affirmation. I said, I was like, this is what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to give it everything that I got. I'm going to go harder than I ever have before. I'm going to dedicate um, more time in learning the business, more time in learning about production. Um, and so then I said, yo, um, I, I, I was already already had an entertainment company that I had ran in Las Vegas in the studio I ran for multiple years. Um, so I t decided to rebrand that and then just create a strictly for music uh, record label. So, yeah, 2020 was like we didn't know what was going on. So I said, you know what? I'm not allowing it to stop my dreams. And, you know, I'm going to still continue to press on. And a lot of people was at home at that time. So I was able to, you know, get a lot of people to kind of tap into what I had going on. So that was uh, that was something that I decided to push through, um, you know, especially the music industry at the time during the pandemic. Nobody knew what was going on. So it was just kind of a time for me to, to jump in there. Okay. So what made you leave and go from Vegas 
to Virginia when, of course, Vegas is more than just the strip, but when there's so much entertainment that goes on on the strip. Um, well, it's a, it's a story. I actually went to Norfolk State uh, University in Virginia uh, for uh, four years. So um, that's Virginia always had a special place in my heart and I knew a lot of people already in the area. Um, I do always tell the story. Uh, the reason I came to Virginia uh, because I wanted to meet Aaliyah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, one of my friends, he told me he, he knew Timberland and he was like, yo, come to Virginia. Da, 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 da. So I actually, you know, uh, went there Unfortunately, she died my freshman year of college. So, you know what I mean? I was like, yo, I'm literally, you know, trying to make it happen and trying to meet her. So it was just kind of awesome young stuff. But it literally turned into uh, me uh, changing like my whole musical direction, meeting a bunch of people. Then I moved back to Vegas. Um, but before I left Virginia, I ended up having a kid. Um, <laughs> and so uh, I was in Vegas for a while. I, then I decided to move back. Yeah. Yeah, what you say? Give me that. I'll make you put some roots down. Hello, hello. So, you know, that kind of like, you know, made me to either uh, be a part time dad and just fly in or just, you know, be a full time dad. And now I've been a full time now for over 10 years. So, um, so yeah, so it's just been a, it's actually been a great thing that I did. Um, I love Vegas. I go home every, every year multiple times. So I have a, I have a condo there still. So, you know, I still do my thing out there. Vegas is pretty affordable in places. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it came up a lot, though. It came up yeah. a lot. Yeah, I was out there for a minute. So, you know, there's some sharks out there. Hello. <laughs> so tell me this. Because you've been in the industry for 14 years. I asked some other producers this. How has technology made it easier or harder for your job? Man, um, well, I'll, I will start out with the hard part first because the hard part mean it created millions of producers at one time. Like once once people was able to bootleg Fruity Loops, I mean, millions of producers was created. I'm not talking about like hundreds, I'm talking millions of producers all across the world. So it make it harder because now everybody like, well, I'll just, I know somebody or my cousin do this or this, that and the other. So technology has hurt the producers who do have skills because now it's kind of like you're in a, a crowded room and you're trying to get attention in a crowded room. And it's like, you know, so that's what kind of made it a lot harder because a lot of people who don't have no musical background just making beats now. And some people hit, hit it. Like, I, I, I heard that. I, I can't play an instrument, but I can put notes to make, to put, put notes together to make them sound good. And there's people who don't never even picked up an instrument, but can hear how a sound goes or mimic someone's sound and then they create their own sound off of that so that's kind of what made it harder but the best part is, is that it don't take you two hours to make a beat you know what i mean it's literally 15 minutes i one time I made a fire beat in three minutes i couldn't even believe it like i had the drum pattern i had that and it was man it was amazing so i wouldn't have been able to do that if i had the npc or if I had the Trident, you know what I mean? Like I would have to program and then bounce it into Pro Tools and do all that. So now with the computers and how, you know, the, the uh, MIDI keyboards and, you know, even I got my, my machine studio here, um, you know, it just makes it a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell me this, being a producer, how many instruments do you think should go into an actual studio composition? Mm, that's a great question because I've heard um, I've heard the minimum is three sounds. I've heard the minimum you should have at least three different. Um, I'm saying disregarding the drums and this, the, the you know the kicks and snares and hi hats and because that that's the heartbeat of the this track. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the heartbeat of the track. But to add a bottom, a middle, and a high, that's how I look at it. Like, you should have something on top with something light, something in the middle simmering, and then that bottom to the record that, that adds that bass and the soul 
to the record. So that that's why I say minimally. But if you got the right piano and the right key and the you know the I mean the chord progression and everything rolling, you can man. I mean, you look at Earth, Wind, and Fire. They had a whole band rocking out. So um, you know you you know it's, music is is limitless. So you know so it's just kind of up to you. But I say a minimum three three my lucky number. So hello. So. Hi, this is Marlette with Classic Glam by Marlette, where classic never goes out of style. We're based here in Palm Bluff, Arkansas, but you can reach us on our website at classicglamgirl.com or Facebook and Instagram at Classic Glam by Marlette. Okay. So, as a producer, if you produce a song and uh, artists perform that song live and decide to use a live band. Which do you think would be better with your own personal music? Oh no, the live band all day. I don't even want to hear my. I don't even want to hear the digital sound. I want. I want somebody to use their hands and their their timing and their skill and make my shit even better. Might take that to another level, you know, or remix it with another song. I think that's what I love about live music is, you know, once you, you know, learn melodies and stuff or, you know, see what the BPMs is, you can kind of match up, you know, mash up all kinds of songs to keep the audience engaged. So, you know, I love live music, man. Okay. So tell me this, of all the instruments, what's your favorite? Tell me why. And what artist's voice do you think sounds a lot like that instrument? Damn, man, you got some good questions over here. Um, Blonde intelligence, baby. I see, I see. I don't know. I'm feeling numb right now. Hold on. No, let me play. Um, I feel like the best instrument to me, my favorite instrument, I even start with a lot of my beats out with this is, man, it has to it has to be the piano it has to be like the keys like i think the keys is like a lot of the greatest songs started on the piano and then they was able to get the instrumentation to go behind it so i feel like um once you get the notes which is you know the notes is the notes you can't kind of go outside of that <laughs> you know what i'm saying of, of what notes go together what sounds go together so I'll say that, and I'll say probably, I mean, I got to give it up to Ryan Isley, man, because I just heard the verses, so I, that's the only person that pops in my head of his, I mean, his facet. I mean, he just can, he can just hit you with so many different ranges, um, whether he's singing, talking, and whether he's just singing a ballad to you, like, because he'll just talk to you and, and is in key and, and on pitch, so... Um, so Ron Osley, hands down, is the, the great, the GOAT, man. So that's who I would say, you know, would be the best person to pair that to. Okay. Well, my favorite instrument, and I cannot play it, is the violin. And I think that when Mary J. Blige do her ad libs, it always reminds me of a violin. Mm, man, that's fire. And, and it's crazy because violin was the first instrument that I... I picked up. I, I picked up because of school, and I quit because my homies told me it was a girl instrument. So I wish what? I would have picked. I, Wait a but a I minute. liked it though. Did I tribute tell you that it's good in the hood. Matter of fact, he knew some cats from the hood that played the violin. I know. I was like in fifth, sixth grade though. I was like in fifth, sixth grade, and I was like influenced by my homies, and I was like. All right, man. So then I ain't even pick up nothing else after that. But um, I still, I still love the violin and I love the sounds off of that. So I, that's one of my life regrets is not continuing with the with that because I could have been a popping violinist right now. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but that did start me on my musical journey at a at a young age. So I am on a, a mission to bring music back into the schools. Um, that's another thing I've been talking about on Clubhouse. We need to start them out at a young age. Get them that, that music. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just teach them, teach them the basics. And I guarantee you, we'll have some more geniuses come out. We'll have some more t 10 to 15 year experience producers. You know what I mean? If you start at six years old and then you get to your 20, man, imagine how dope you're going to be. So that's where my initiative is once we kind of get through these, these next couple months and stuff is to bring that 
with everybody in their city. So I would like to add you to that, um, Ronnie, to, to, to be a part of that initiative to bring the music so back. I, I want to ask you a question then, since okay. you brought it up. One of the major issues is the fact that they start combining classrooms, making classroom size bigger when it's supposed to be like a certain size, but like in bigger school districts. I went to a small school district and my music teacher was a opera singer. And so we learned, she was from Italy and we learned all different kinds of songs at a, a young age, but as Classroom sizes got bigger, core common standards and all of that. You have to reach benchmarks, people, teachers teaching from certain areas. Mm -hmm. How in reality would you get those programs implemented? It's going to always, you know, the biggest issue with programs is funding. So it's going to have to be on a volunteer basis because everybody loves volunteer. Everybody, you can have community service hours. So this is where you get college students involved, people who can teach in, in an hour a day. Because I'm going to, I plan on donating an hour a day to something, um, whether it's in teaching, whether it's in giving back, have feed at home. I'm going to do that an hour a day is my goal. So if we can get creatives and, and experts in their local area to donate an hour a you know, or, or a week or, or something just to teach some, some kids or have them, or we get some donation of instruments because it's a lot of pawn shops and stuff with instruments. So let's like, let's reach back, let's get back to these kids. And like, it's gonna have to start there until we can get some type of funding. And that's where your connections and networking comes in. So hello. I was gonna tell you, go to grantalerts.com. It used to be free. But now it's $9.99. But there are a lot of grant programs out there for people who are wanting to teach music education because the the, the demand is there. Right. So go, I mean, it's like hundreds and hundreds. So there is funding, but people just have to know how to find it. And that's what we need. And this is something I just actually um, this is something that I actually thought of while I was on Clubhouse um, and just kind of thinking about it, like a lot of people are missing, like they want to do the music, they want to be in the music industry, but then they have nothing, they have no idea about, they never picked up an instrument, they just kind of know what they like to hear, the kind of songs they like to hear, and then hey, they want to do it, but if we educate, the producers get better, the songwriters get better, the singers get better, the rappers get better, and then we can have some amazing music to continue this legacy that, uh, you know, the, the people from the past have, you know, sacrificed and gave, you know, so we got to keep this thing rolling and music is part of life. So I listen to music every day. So I got to keep this thing going as long as I'm a part of the music industry. Okay. Next question I want to ask you about is attitude. What do you consider a professional attitude in the industry. The reason why I ask you that is because I have did interviews, I have watched other interviews, I have seen how people interact, and, and I think in certain areas, you shouldn't be cussing in, in, in every other way. It's a new giveaway. The Blonde Intelligence Wine Tray Set and the Chris Nielsen Our Voyage Home CD Giveaway. To enter, comment on Chris's interview on any Blonde Intelligence platform and you will be entered. Drawing is April 30th, 2021. Posted on the Blonde Intelligence Facebook page. is a cuss word and you're introducing yourself and it's ML for this and shit and all this kind of stuff so tell me man were you in my room today because we we had no, two uh, <laughs> we had two we had two artists two young brothers that came in with this you know mindset that we're like we're in a uh 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 regular type of environment we got business professionals in here people who jobs are on the line that they have to be very careful what they say 
because they never know what can come back, you know, on their job and their livelihood. So if you are trying to, cause they, uh, they gotta understand it's a music business. They should just call it business. They shouldn't even have the music in it. They should just say, this is business because they get it confused that you can be yourself when it comes to business. Now you have a representative of yourself and then you have yourself. So right now y'all talking to Rothstein representative right now. This is who you talking to when you, you go on speaking engagements, you go on clubhouse, you, you know, on social platforms, you have to be very careful of how you present yourself and what you say, because if you say the right things and you portray the right attitude and you're doing the right things, people will come to you, want to work with you, uh, want to open other doors for you because they see the value that you're bringing to you know, the society. But if you out here and thinking you could be yourself and just cuss and some people don't even like cussing. Some people don't even cuss. You know what I mean? Some people are Christian. Some people, you know, believe, different, you know, so you have to be respectful to everyone. Read the room you're in, whether it's in a professional setting, whether it's in a, even in a, in a, a club setting, you still got to kind of carry yourself a certain way. You don't want to be on the guy standing on the bar throwing bottles and acting crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, like people, like you want to always have your first impression be your best impression. So anytime I'm anywhere, I always make sure that, um, you know, I'm, I'm putting my best foot forward and I'm representing myself properly. Okay. So my next thing is I'm going to have you explain to the audience what a split CD is and the purpose of it. Man, I just, man, you, you must be tapping my phone because I just got off the phone with someone about a split sheet and the arguments they were having about uh, percentages. They just got a placement with a big artist. Uh, and so, you know, once that goes out, the teeth come out, the, cl the cl cl claws come out and the greed come out. So it's like, no, I need a bigger percent because I did this. And one guy, he actually just added some background vocals and he wanted a bigger percentage. So to prevent all this arguing and bickering, there's an online form you can get. It's an app on Split Sheets. It's a website on Split Sheets. You can Google Split Sheets. So me as a producer, I already know if I made the beat, I got my food, I already got my plate. But if I add a hook or if I add anything else, we need to discuss songwriting credit you know so to avoid having any confusion legally i you need you I, you see i'm sitting this smart <laughs> i need that last four of social conversation with somebody it was about six o'clock in the morning one morning and i was like um you need to get a split sheet before and they just refused and I was standing in the bed screaming like John Crawford beating somebody <laughs> with a hanger. No spreadsheet! No spreadsheet! Oh. So I want you as a professional to explain the importance of it. You were getting into it when I when I interrupted you. I'm sorry for that. But no, I no, you're good. Go in on that particular part. If you ever hear about the 90s, that was like when people talk about song credit and they left me off this and they 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 produced they in the song credits that's when they put your credits in the in the, the booklet back in the day i know so many people to this day that that wrote on records that name is not in there and you know why they didn't have a split sheet they just was in the studio mesmerized glamorized by the star that they're with they're so, so happy to be there and they and, and the people know that they can take advantage of hungry artists and hungry songwriters or, and and then next thing you know you help write a, mi a million a billion gross <laughs> hit and now you're not getting nothing like you know how sick man like one guy in my room he told me he literally ranted the he threw up he threw he heard the song he wrote and he had nothing to do with no payment, no publishing. And he ran to his, his his toilet and threw up because he was sick to believe that they produced this song. They put it out behind his back and he didn't have no split sheet. So I say that I need your signature. I, if you can get a copy of the ID, if you can get, get <laughs> the last four day social, 
I need to let the if anything come back, I need to legally know that you was physically there and there's witnesses in the room and we're all signing and agreeing that this is how it's going to be split because this is your intellectual property. That is your livelihood for your life, your kids, kids. If you you want your kids, kids to eat off of your hard work and your sacrifice that you put in, you better have that split sheet on every mother occasion. <laughs> See, I'm about to cuss right there because that's how passionate I am <laughs> about split sheets. But I ain't gonna cuss. I'm just, just playing. But, um, but um, I'm so serious about that. So, it, and it's just professionalism. Just get the weird and the. Uh, it's kind of nerve wracking part, but once you explain to people and they're if they've done it before, it's easy. If they haven't done it before, then it's like pulling teeth. Like, why we got to sign this? How we know it's gonna be a hit? Da -da 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 -da. Listen, my guy. Just, what if it is? But what if it is? That's what I tell them. What if it is? What you gonna do? You gonna be knocking on my door? You gonna be wanting to fight me? You gonna be wanting to beat me? Get, do all that if you didn't get a piece of? You know what I'm saying? If you, I know people that wanted to hurt people because of this. So that's why I'm saying. It's the Blind Intelligence 420 subscriber giveaway. I know you're supposed to stop, but you can't. This giveaway is handmade by me, Miss Ronnie the host of the Blind Intelligence Show. All you have to do is subscribe to any Blind Intelligence platform to be entered. And yes, current subscribers are entered too. You can subscribe to the Blind Intelligence Podcast, available on your favorite podcasting platform. You can also be entered by subscribing to the Blind Intelligence YouTube channel. You get a bamboo rolling tray with embellishments and a compartment drawer, three very Blind Intelligence shot glass, one Blind Intelligence reusable shot bottle, one handmade weed leaf ashtray, one set of dice, and one set of playing cards. Drawing will be held April 15th, 2021 and posted to the Blind Intelligence blog page on Facebook. Sets can also be purchased on Blind Intelligence Etsy shop or www.blind-intelligence.com. Follow me on Instagram at miss.blonde.intelligence underscore Ronnie. It's just best to get the weird, awkward part out the way business-wise so then we can just focus on doing the music. I'm sorry to be long-winded, but yeah. You good. You said something in there that I tried to explain to people. So the next thing I'm going to tell you to explain, intellectual property. Hello. Now, if I what we what we're on right now is intellectual property. What we're doing right now is intellectual property. If it's something that could be viewed, listened to, um, you know, sold, property is like you know, intellect is is what you you created from your mind, and you was able to in in you know in a logical way put it down on paper, put it down on audio. So you want to protect, this is you, this is your baby. These are the notepads that you got in your, your house. This is the recordings you got on your phone. This is the time, the, the, the countless times you in the studio working on this song, working on this song, working on the song. You want to protect that with everything that you got because this is you. You're the intellectual property. I tell people that all the time, any artist I deal with, you are the music. So why would you let somebody else have property of control of your music of you unless you get paid for it <laughs> you know what i'm saying unless you decide to sign on the dotted line to sell your intellectual property to a label to make money off of so but and you can still protect yourself before it even gets to that point of dealing with the label so because they know what you're they know what you're worth they know that uh drake is a billion uh billion dollar artist they know that more than that trillion so Drake protect this. So you got to look at yourself like a billionaire artist. Like I got to protect myself and I got to get all my dollars. And then when I'm getting my dollars, I don't mind sh splitting some money with people to help me get to my, you know, get more money. So that's why I got to say with intellectual property is protected with everything you got. Hello. Well, I thank you for coming. And I would like for you to give everybody your social media handles, where they can follow you, how they can work with you, any new projects you got out, anything that you want to give us the last words. 
Hey, well, first of all, I want to thank you for reaching out. Thank you for coming to my room. Um, I love your vibe. I love your platform. I wish you the best and, uh, you know, continual success. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. I'm on there heavy. Uh, it is at I, like the, the, the letter I, A-M, Rothstein Beats, R-O-T-H-S-T-E-I-N. I know it's kind of a crazy name. But I want to make sure it stands out. Rothstein Beats. Um, it's probably the title on here as well. So uh, follow me on there. Uh, Clubhouse is Rothstein Beats. Um, you can definitely find me on there. I'm on there every day. Matter of fact, I my room is still going on. I told them to close the room, but they still got it going on. They don't want to leave. But definitely Clubhouse and Instagram is the two you can find me on. I have my link tree where you can list me on. Beat Stars, YouTube. Just Google Rothstein Beats. I got music on Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal. So it's some beat tapes, uh, some stuff like that as well. And um, CasinoGangRecords.com, Casino Gang. Make sure you check me out. Got some merch coming, um, CasinoGangRecords.com. I got my artist about to be on there. So yeah, that's that's what I got going on. And I'm, I'm thankful for your, uh, you know, allowing me to have to speak on your platform. And, you know, just thank you again. Hello. And, uh, you know. Hello, and I look forward to seeing y'all on Clubhouse and hear me on IG. All right. Y'all heard him. You can find him on Clubhouse, on IGTV. And don't forget, you can catch this on podcast, on all podcasts and platforms, and on YouTube and IGTV. Thank you for coming. Bye. Peace. Advertise with Blonde Intelligence, where our listeners experience exquisite cranial repertoire. Blonde Intelligence is a new podcast and video channel featuring entertainment, musical artists, producers, entrepreneurs, as well as discussions on social topics, making the Blonde Intelligence platform suitable for a wide variety of product ad types. Video, Instagram TV, YouTube, and links shared to all Blonde Intelligence social media pages and select group networking platforms. This creates a collective base of over 50,000 potential sets of eyes on your product or service. Each sponsored ad will feature on both the podcast and video platforms. Sponsors have the choice of either a voice ad or audio video ad, with three options for placements. Create a win-win business partnership by advertising with Blonde Intelligence.